All right, we should be live. Welcome to anyone that will be joining us today. This is a this is kind of a first for the channel. Been joined by Ransom Bands. Obviously, I've appeared on yours quite a few times, or a couple yeah. of times even, when we were discussing either post-match things, the, the, the most recent one being the transfer deadline day, which was... That, that was quite funny that one that, that was a good that, that was almost like a free four hour session of just <laughs> that was that was that was therapy that's what that was yeah that yeah that really was especially for you guys for us like we had nothing to do all day because we, we had everything done already but yeah as the people can guess by the title we are discussing the the possibility the the probability i think in fact it's, it's basically fact it will probably happen next month uh pochettino mm -hmm. becoming man united manager because you know, I can't, I can't see it being anyone else. Um, mm. And you know, what? I thought, why not bring one of the one of the biggest, one of the best um, Man United YouTube YouTubers? Out? Well, you're not just Man United, but obviously you're known for being a Man United fan. Yeah. Um, and you're what? You're what did you say you were? You're about eighty subs away from fifty k. Is it something like that? Yeah, yeah. It's been a flipping. It's been a whirlwind, mate. The last few months, channels doing mad bits, mad numbers. It's quite massively, isn't it? Uh, massively, bro. Like I think I've done twelve k in the last three months, and um. I'm on about 1.2 million views on my channel at the moment already. So oh, smashing it. Yeah, I mean, I'm killing the month, bro. I can't lie. I'm, I'm enjoying it, bro. I'm enjoying it, man. So yeah, it's it's been very good. Yeah, it's class, man. Because you you you're basically gone effectively on your own with your own channel now for the past month yeah. or so. How, 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 how long? I think been? it's been three months since I left. Three yeah. months. Three months. Because okay. it was um, it hasn't even actually been that actually. Because when was I in Dubai? I was in Dubai in August, wasn't I? I was in Dubai in August. Oh, so, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, in August is when I started um, regularly uploading. Um, so, yeah, that was two months ago. I can't believe August is two months ago. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. It, it, it feels like so long, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Whoa. Oh, man. But, yeah, let, let's let's get cracking. Let's get talking about uh, talking about the possibility of Pochettino becoming your manager. What are your thoughts on, on, on that? Gas He's been the guy that I've wanted from even before Oli. You know what I mean? This is documented. That's the thing about YouTube. If you say anything, it's out there, isn't it? Yep. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> and Poch was the guy I wanted even before Oli came in. Do you know what I mean? And um, obviously he was at Tottenham at the time. It wasn't really possible. There were lots of talks. Obviously he spoke to United. We know that. Like yeah, From yeah. people I know, um, Tottenham were just like not allowing him to answer any questions on Manchester United. The press were openly asking him questions and he wasn't really batting it off he was kind of just kind of saying yeah i can't speak about it laughing it off kind of thing mm -hmm. so we know there was contact we knew that he was interested we knew that the club are interested and ed woodward's very interested in him he's always been an ed woodward target but i don't know why ollie was given the job on a permanent basis for the length of time he was given knowing that pochettino was not i wouldn't say available but he was on the horizon in it so it was it was it was a bit of a weird one to be honest. We got Oli in, it hasn't worked out because he's had his pants pulled down in it. Like, it is, That's it is, the thing it. I find strange, man. Like I had, I was really shocked when you guys gave him the full full contract. I thought it'd just be caretaker to the end of the season. And then that's it, go hard on the next manager, whether it be Poch or whoever, maybe Allegri, I don't know, someone else. Not yeah, but it's just, we've, got no, we've got numpties in charge, bro. A lot of us fans, including myself, yeah, let the romance take over. And when we went on a decent run, we were like, right, you know what? Maybe this could work. And hmm. my logic for it, yeah, I can't speak for everyone else because a lot of people just get super fucking emotional. My thing was, I'm looking at Man United. I'm like, we, we, we did the David Moyes thing, loads of experience in the Premier League, stabilised Everton, had these men probably overperforming for the players they had. We tried that, didn't work. We tried the Louis van Gaal thing, like very decorated manager, international coach, well respected. Yep. It didn't work. Then we tried the Jose Mourinho, Premier League proven winner, all that, and it didn't work. So I thought, you know what, Oli's a wild card. Maybe this one might work because we tried everything else. Mm -hmm. That was my that was my thing. So I gone, thought, you know, gone what? for the proven, gone for yeah. the yeah. Let's go for someone. We've tried everything else, so let's just go for someone who knows the club, and he's just going to give it hundred percent. Maybe that's yep. enough. Do you know what I mean? That was my that was my thing behind it. It wasn't yeah, Oli's going to be an amazing tactician and he's going to turn us into some. Nah, I never thought it was going to be that. But the the speed of the decline has just been mad because after he went on a run and he got the job, it's almost since he got the job he's been crap. Mm. This is what I find is that's just another thing that's weird as well. It's do you think it's because it, it's your bad form right now is because you didn't get 
the players in or didn't get players in early because what i find strange is almost since bruno came in in january yeah. you guys started to hit a lot of form and you were like you obviously you were scoring a lot of goals picking up points managed to get champions league off the back of it because you were below us and just kept on overtaking us kept on winning the games and especially yeah. in like the um like in the in in the restart so how like because I, I expected you guys to challenge top four fairly easily this year and now we've just started mm. off miserably <laughs> No, uh, but I don't what, know what went wrong with that. Like it's just with the window, I, I wouldn't have thought that we would have challenged for top four, bro. The reason why I say that is um I was under no illusion, yeah, that after lockdown we were playing shit. Like Martial was scoring goals, playing well, and Bruno was scoring penalties, bro. We relied on penalties to beat Copenhagen in extra time. We weren't playing well, but a lot of United fans are deluded. They just think, oh, like, look, unbeaten run. They were coming up, yeah, 25 game unbeaten run. But we didn't move anywhere in the league. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, loads of people like to throw out all these little nice little stats that, that can be manipulated however you want. But the facts are, yeah, we weren't progressing. We finished on the same number of points that would have made you finish sixth the year before. Like, we haven't improved and we've spent a lot of money. Like, people are forgetting that Oli brought in Bruno. And if you include the Van der Beek money and all that, Oli spent over 300 mil, bro. Like, it's not mm. like Oli. So when man is saying, oh, Oli hasn't been backed and that, he sold all these players, he spent all this money, bought all these players in, Lukaku left. He didn't replace him with a striker, which is fine because Martial is good enough. However, you should have replaced him with a, a, a competent right winger, not Daniel James. Yeah. You see what <laughs> I'm saying? So it's one of them things. It was a gig's recommendation, whatever. And then in this window now, we signed two flipping 18-year-old kids or something for like 40 one, million. And one of them's not even like joining until January at least. And it's just all of all of the, your transfer deadline day stuff just seems like such a panic. Like a everything, bringing in, bringing in Cavani for ridiculous, like his wages are ridiculous and like obviously the agent fees. Um, all because you like you couldn't get the Sancho thing done, so you're like, okay, let's get a forward who's available. Right, there's a, mm. a striker, there's a, there's a free striker available. Just just go for him, and then um, who is it? Tellez left back, right? Yeah, Tellez left back. We needed him because Luke Shaw's a donkey, but the yeah, thing you is, definitely yeah, needed a left back. The ten sure. million agents fees that we spent, we could have put that on top of the Van der Beek fee and just got Thomas Party. You know what I mean, what's the point? Like, but that's it. Like, because we didn't need. Cavani, bro, like Cavani, yeah, cool. You'll come off the bench. Like, none of it, none of it seemed smart, like at all. Mm. Like you, you didn't need Cavani. You didn't need. It really, you didn't need Van der Beek, even though mm. he's a baller. It's like that's the one position in the whole team you did not need was an attacking midfielder. Given I the fact you, you, you know how the, the only and, way and Bruno. the only way them signings make sense is if Pochettino definitely comes in in November. If he does, it makes sense, isn't it? Because Pochettino likes a target man. He, like, he likes a player in the box, isn't it? He likes someone that can get I, in around the box. And also, he doesn't play wingers. He plays floating tens and eights from wide, like he played Ali there, he played Ericsson there. So I could see him playing Donny there or playing Bruno from there. So in a pot system, it actually works, isn't it? But in an Oli system, it doesn't work. But like, in, in a sense, I agree. But then also, it's like, did they really sign Cavani in that with Pochettino in mind? I feel like it was just more, we kind of needed a player to appease the fans. Maybe and, like it's a big name, big name. Pochettino striker likes forward. a striker though, and I think Pochettino would play Martial from the left like we play Son. Do you know what I'm saying? I was thinking that because I think we wanted Martial for quite a while, which he did. was way too unaffordable. Like we couldn't get it done, and Pochettino was the main reason for that. I did think I do think he really likes Martial. So he if, he, if he does join, I'll be very intrigued to see to see what he does. Whether like you said, whether he keeps him striker or makes him like a left left. He player. plays him from the left, hundred percent. I feel like he's a, he is him like, left. Forward, maybe he is green. like our answer right. for Son. Do you know what I'm saying? In terms of down that side, going past players, getting goals from wide. I think that he definitely sees him in that mode. I don't think he sees him because you had Llorente as well. He likes big presence in the box, Pochettino. He doesn't like these little small... Because you lot played Son down the middle and I thought it worked. But Poch changed it back as soon as nah, Kane was we, fit. Son down the middle was fine as a cover for when Kane was injured, but doing that consistently just didn't it didn't work because then you lost so much of just having that pace on the left hand side. Mm. There was just like no there, there were there was no other options. Like normally it's because Son has the pace, so then he can then feed into to get it to Kane or whoever it may be. But if it's just Son by himself up top, then it you're kind of limited in what in, in how you can play going forward. Which is why I'm so happy we've got another striker in. <laughs> but this <laughs> is it. That's it. Uh, so I think that the Pochettino thing, I think our actual personnel probably suits him more than anyone because we don't have any strikers, I mean, wingers, and he doesn't play with them. 
Do you know what I mean? This is the weird thing. I feel like it, it, it's weirdly enough, as soon as as soon as Pochettino left us, I feel like he was destined for Man United. And I could see that. And like, my dad was one of the first people to say, actually, he was like, give it a year or two, he will be at Man United next. And at first, I was kind of like rubbishing in there. Nah, he wouldn't like go to another another Prem team, this, that, and the other. But that's just a load of bollocks. I mean, he probably, mm. he definitely wouldn't go to like an Arsenal or anything like that. But no, no, no. You can tell, you can just tell with what, like, because Man United Spurs, no rivalry there. Nothing yeah. in it. It's not like there's any issues in that front. He knows at least you're gonna, you guys can spend money with him there. Because even like you said, Oli and Mourinho both spent like 300 million each. Yeah. On, on players so at least he knows he can get money which is I think extremely frustrating for him at the end of the Spurs thing like when he had that thing in, in, in the, the Bayern Munich um, this was like in the in the pre-season in his pre, uh, pre-match pre conference in Bayern Munich when he was like well they should change my title to to, yeah. to coach not manager because yeah, I'm not because I'm not like I'm not in charge of any of the of any of the transfers so I think you could tell he definitely got extremely frustrated by that I, I think, think that Pochettino had United. the the burden of being the manager to take you to the new stadium because mm. he's the one who felt the restraints of your spending in it. And he done amazingly well considering you weren't really spending. Like his net spend throughout his whole tenure was less than a hundred million. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like, and for him to get you Champions League football, to get you a Champions League final, like with having to sell his best players to buy, like for me, like that speaks for itself what he's done. I think he was unlucky. If he was coming into Tottenham now with the new stadium, with money to spend, being back the way Jose's been back, then you could seriously look at him winning something. You know what? The thing is, I think that's definitely true because for me, especially like this hot, like it's almost every year, especially those two years that we were really close to winning the league, where we came second and third. Both those times, it's always been the case of, ah, oh, we've been one player away. Even yeah. like the Champions League final, it's always been like that. Okay, Kane's in, Kane's was injured beforehand, or this and that. Like we've always been just that one player away every time. And Pochettino never got that sort of back in to have that complete team and squad. Whereas now, obviously, you can see. And that, any, every year, I said that one player. It's always been mentioned as Bale. But it's like yeah. if we had Bale in that team, we would have won X. We we would have won Y, Z, like whatever. Now you're seeing Mourinho be backed with a full squad and Bale. It's kind of like, mm. if we had Pochettino with this Bale, team, we would have won The something. year that you were in the Champions League final, you probably win that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking yeah. as well. Because he, he is a definition of big game player. He's final a match player. winner. <laughs> He's a match winner on his own, bro. Like I was even saying yesterday, I was talking to my brother here, and I said, I said, that front three looks frightening, bro. Even if Bale's only 70%, he can slap a free kick in the top corner. Like when, when you're playing crap, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like he gives you that, that like you can't really put a price on that. No, exactly. And this is why I don't understand fans that were saying that he shouldn't have played in that final or started that final because if it's just, he is the best or one of the best strikers in the world. Mm. Bearing in mind as well, he had also been training for a month beforehand because the, the final was, there, there was a bigger gap between the end of the season and the final compared to normal. Normally it's like two weeks because it's like the end of the season FA Cup the season the week after and then Champions League final the week after that but there was an extra week gap I think so it's like three weeks and he was already back in training at the end of the season so he had four weeks of preparation so mm. there's no way he wasn't fit fit you can maybe argue he wasn't match fit because obviously he was out for three months but he was definitely fit and we, he was the one that said I'm playing in this game you can't turn down that mentality and you can't turn down that quality to not have him play but I do think it was a shambles that Lucas didn't start <laughs> yeah, because what he did to get us to the final, it should have been him, Son, and Kane as the front. Three. I wasn't sure though, because you know what I mean. With me, I saw it and I was like, "Rad, did Poch bottle it? Do you know what I mean, or did he do the right thing?" You know what I mean. So it was a mad one for me personally. The way Tottenham were playing, I wouldn't have started Kane just I because, just, just I because I know that Harry Kane, yeah can always have an impact no matter what time he comes on the pitch because he's that good. You know what I mean? He's not the kind of player that has to start. You know what I mean? Like He's not the mm. kind of player that has to start for me because he's an impact player, bro. Harry Kane can score from a corner. He's good in the air. He can do anything, bro. And also, like when you see Harry Kane warming up here and it's nil-nil and you've got fucking half an hour to go, you're like, oh, fuck's sake. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it's just one of them things. So I just think that with what, the way Tottenham are playing and the momentum and everything, like, just don't change it, bro. The, the the another thing that was pretty poor that we did though is we we it was well, funny enough he ended up being our best player on the day but we ended up starting Winks as well who mm. had been out for the same time as as Kane so Winks and Kane mm. had both been out for like three months two three months and he started them both in the final now I think that was a mistake because yeah. you're bringing in two new 
not like so, like totally could be unfair or like they had just haven't played for a few months and i think that totally shifted the dynamic a bit um and like i said like winks on the day was our best player mm. but weirdly enough i don't think he should have started that because like you said it's one of them ones where you're kind of disrupting the flow a bit and for yeah. me it's because kane's a world-class striker world-class player i always wanted to start him so for me it would have been yeah. kane lucas son but then it should have been maybe delhi deeper in midfield or whatever we were doing at the time Sissoko, whoever and it might have worked out better. But either way, I think a lot of the players were just didn't perform on the day. It was it a was, strange um, game because Liverpool weren't good. Like, no, it looked, no, it looked like both teams it. were trying to throw it away. Like when I was watching it, I was like, <laughs> nobody wants this game. Do you know what I mean? It was like both teams decided to save their worst performances in the competition for the final. Like it was really mad. It was actually really? a crazy game as a neutral. I was like, both teams are playing shit. Like it could go either way. Both put up two of the best semi-finals ever, like two of the mm. best comebacks, and then just to flop the final. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I wonder what the, if they didn't get the penalty in the first 20 seconds, I wonder what that game would have turned out. It was like, going to pens that, anyway. That was going to pens. <laughs> nil nil, nothing was happening because that was just diabolical. But I think like a lot of Spurs fans would agree and like comment this as well, guys. If you're watching this and you're good, a lot of Spurs fans would say that obviously incredible coach incredible coach because like you like he's brought up the team from what we were to a Champions League team even with Southampton he brought them to from like a pretty much battling with relegation to all right they're playing good football and they're playing uh, pretty decent that's obviously why we got him in mm -hmm. um so it's like but but some huge huge moments where his biggest flaws were definitely his either team selections or substitutions because there were moments where we're in the semi-final against Chelsea, I believe it was in the FA Cup. I think it was the first time I actually met your brother like in person. It was outside yeah. that game. And he goes and plays Sun left wing back for no reason. Yeah. And still starts Vaughan in goal, even though your semi-finals against Chelsea. There's a lot of cases like that where he would he would be very questionable for who he'd bring on and uh, who he'd start. And even in the final, we could see we weren't scoring. We weren't getting the chances. We weren't really breaking out their defence. It took him until the 80th minute to bring on Lorente to actually mm. try something different. And, and there's plenty of times like that before, whereas he never, ever wanted to do a substitution early. You had to wait until minimum 65, 70, 75 minutes for a substitution mm. to happen. Do you see that being a problem with Man United being, maybe it was like impatience from the fans or do you think he maybe like learned from it? Like what, what do you think of like the flaws that know, he potentially you know, has as a manager? I don't know because every manager has got it in it. Like I think when I was watching Liverpool at the beginning, I thought Klopp, like his in-game management was poor and it's improved over time. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? There were times where Klopp made changes and Liverpool ended up dropping points because of it. Do you know what I mean? And it's just one of them ones where you would like to think that managers learn from these things. Yeah. I mean, you would like to think that, but you can never be sure. Like even under Ferguson, there were loads of times where I thought, bruv, like why are you waiting until the ninety fifth, like the 85th minute to make a change in that month? Like, it's just like no manager's got everything in it. I don't think there's a manager that's got everything. I think that a lot of managers now, especially, they just, they're set in their ways. They have their system that they believe in. And what makes them great is they're willing to die on that hill, isn't it? Like, that's just how yeah. it is. <laughs> yeah. You know I mean? That's what makes them great. You look at Pep. Definitely feel that way with Klopp. Pochettino. Yeah. As well. <laughs> you look at Pep, you look at Klopp, you look at Bielsa. These men believe that their way is the best way, in it? And they're willing yeah. to just die on that hill. So because of that, with a, man, with a coach like Poch, because he's a coach, when you've actually got a coach, they're not very flexible. Like managers will be more pragmatic, like Jose, and say, you know, we'll change these things and that. But these guys that are pure football coaches that have like a philosophy and identity, they're not really willing to change that, bro. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? They're not. And you just have to just take the rough with the smooth with them. When it goes well, you'll praise the shit out of them. When it goes badly, everyone's going to have their um, thoughts on why it didn't work, in it. But ultimately, he's a very good coach, bro. Like I spoke he to Jay, Jay Rodriguez. I had an interview with him that's on my channel. Okay, sick. And and he um, managed him at Southampton. He told me some of the stuff that Poch was doing with the players, bro, like not even football-related things, just like the team bonding stuff and the way he, he was very big on players just trusting each other and doing other things. Yeah. And they had certain exercises they did and all of these things. The guy is... The guy is not only a very good football coach, he understands the players and psychologically gets into their heads and he builds like a family amongst the players, in it. And he gets players that go out there and they're willing to die for the cause, in it. And that's just what it is. You can't teach that, bro. So, like, I'll be more than happy with the young kind of squad that we have at the moment mm -hmm. for him to come in. He's the right kind of manager. Because when I look at all these players right now, I'm thinking, what's Oli teaching these guys? 
Like, what can you learn from Oli if you're Anthony Martial, you're 24 years old, you're Pogba, you're 27 years yeah, old, and, you, and you're playing, you're playing for France, you've won a World Cup. What the hell are you gonna learn from Oli Gunnar Solskjaer, bro? Especially with the, his lack of experience ma managerial wise. Um, obviously, <laughs> relegated Cardiff and managing in the Norwegian league. It's kind of like, well, well, before he came to United, the best player he'd ever managed was um, Haaland, yeah, at Molder, when Haaland wasn't the Haaland he is now. No, and I was going to say, and I swear he didn't even like, it's almost like as soon as Oli left, that's when Haaland became Haaland. <laughs> <It's like, laughs> the freedom. Was... <laughs> Bro, there you go, innit? Like, Oli's never had a decent squad to choose from. He's never had top players to choose from. What can he really tell these players, bro? I'm hearing that Bruno's coming in the dressing room and already fucking giving it all your dressing down. Do you know what I mean? They don't respect him. How can yeah, you respect, no respect him? You're Bruno Fernandes. I play with flipping CR7 on the weekends and then I'm coming back to this guy. Trust me, he's... He, <laughs> <laughs> he was probably sold a dream back in January. But like, that's it. Oh, yeah, you're going to play at United. Oh, yeah, by the way, Oli, I was a manager. But you're going to you're gonna play at United, bro. <laughs> like, but, but that's what I mean. So if you're someone like that, imagine if you're a big personality and then these guys brought in Harry Maguire, who wasn't even a captain at Leicester and giving him the captain's armband at Manchester United, which has been a complete shambles. There's been so many decisions, yeah, that as a player you wouldn't respect. And then this you have to remember, in football, there's a hierarchy in the dressing room. You don't bring an outsider into the team, yeah, and give them the captain's armband. That never happens in football, bro. Like, do you know what no. I'm saying? Casillas was was the captain at Real Madrid. Do you know what I mean? When Ronaldo came in, he didn't get the armband. It's that's, that's not how it works. No. Nope. Do you know what I'm saying? Then Sergio Ramos got it after that. And then when Sergio Ramos leaves, someone that's been at the club for a certain amount of time will get it. They're not going to bring in someone and give them the flipping captain's armband. That's not how it works in football. You definitely have like lack of lack of leadership, really, in your in your entire squad, and that, from the management to the players as well. Mm -hmm. There doesn't, uh, I, I don't know, man. I, I, when anytime I watch like a Man United game, obviously not all the time, but a lot of the times I watch a Man United game nowadays, and I don't really see many of your players taking the game by the throat. Really, mm -hmm. I see I see glimpses of it in Martial, in terms of how he can score goals for you guys, mm -hmm. but there's been plenty of times where that, that really should be Pogba. That really should be Pogba driving the midfield and kind of controlling everything. And especially against the game against us, like, mm. and the start of the season, he just seems so absent, almost like he just doesn't want to lead this team. There's no balance and, though. And also mm. he got the armband taken from him and so did De Gea because they spoke out against the manager and he lost the armband. So... <laughs> Yes, I think Poch I think Pochettino would be great for the development of your players. Fantastic mm. for the development of players, especially like I said with the young players you have. Donny van der Beek would be someone that would be perfect for perfect to, to be have Pochettino's coach because he's definitely someone we wanted as well, or he wanted even because um, he just fits as that kind of player. He, he, uh, similar to to, to Delhi in a way, yeah. very similar. Yeah, in a way, yeah, kind of. Is is in in um yeah yeah very, very similar. But again, for me, with the where I see an issue with you guys having Pochettino as manager right now is I feel like with Man United, there is a huge, huge expectation. Um, and especially with it being it having gone wrong for quite a while now, for a few years, it feels like a lot of fans are not going to be satisfied with, with if you don't have instant um, kind of responses and instant um, success in a way. Because Pochettino know. as like, he's turned Southampton into a great team, turned us into an incredible team. And Okay, yeah, you probably you definitely get a lot more back into you guys, and he will develop your players well. I just still worry that you, there's just going to be a lot of frustration if he doesn't say maybe deliver a trophy in the first year or or I don't think first year four or something like that. I don't think first year or top four. Like, well, especially if, this year, yeah, this year not. I think even, that like, this year is year. a free hit for Pochettino when he comes in in November because I think Oli will have us out of the top four race by the time Poch comes. So it's one of them ones where when I look at win the Champions League, we're not going to win that. PSG and Leipzig probably beat us in the two games coming, then we're probably in the Europa League anyway. So mm -hmm. the, the way I look at it... Yeah, there. <laughs> no, 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 bruv, that's it. So the way I look at it is, yeah, it's a free hit for Pochettino this season if he comes in in November because we're out of the top four weeks, man, because what we lost to Crystal Palace, lost to Tottenham, and the chances are between Arsenal, Chelsea, Everton, one of them are going to beat us, if not more than one of them. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So when I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, what, three losses already? Three losses in the first five games, six games? Mate, it's not a great start, is it? No. So I think Poch comes in. If he comes in, he gets a free hit. And then maybe we get a player in for him in January or whatever. 
and then it's a clean slate at the start of the start of the season. And the thing, I think you know some United fans, their standards are so low anyway. I don't even think Poch will be under that much pressure anymore. <laughs> he's coming in after Jose's ruined the morale and then Oli's completely lost the dressing room. I think Poch has got a free hit for at least the rest yeah, of the yeah. season and the next season before people start really judging him. He's coming at the perfect time if he comes because everything's at an all-time low, isn't it? Yeah, you lot will probably be guessed that like you might have some harmony in the team and players yeah. are actually like... I Because that's the thing. I would love to see if Pochettino can actually like... Kind of change Pogba a bit in in like and just oh, he get can. Him like proper fighting for the fighting for Man United again. That would be really interesting to see because, like I said, he's good at developing players, mm. but let, it'd be good to see what he's like at managing already top world renowned players. Um, mm. That that could be that that would be very interesting. I think someone's made a good point as well that I can't lie. I'm a little bit worried about not ne- not necessarily who they said, but where is it? Alan Morgan with a comment here. You do realise if Poch takes over at Man United, we could lose some of our players, including Kane. Now, I don't think Kane necessarily, or at least not yet. I don't think you lose any of your players. You know why? Because you've got Gareth I... Bale now. If you didn't have Gareth Bale, I think that Man United looks a lot more attractive, in it? But now, yeah. you've got, now you've got a world beater there. Like, I just think that man are looking at Tottenham and saying, well, actually, this was not better than us. Like, I'm, I'm cool here. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? They haven't got a Bale and a Son. So the get, thing so is, I can see someone like Deli Ali coming to you lot, and I thought of it for quite mm. a while, and I, I mm. can kind of see Deli Ali as a Man United player, and even who was it? Sir Alex said it himself to Jose Mourinho, saying that. Well, why do you like, want Deli if you got player, Donny? But well, now, yeah, better, now it's going to be yeah, a lot. Of, it's going to be probably not, but it just seems like a Man United player to me mm. for someone. If if Poch was to try and get someone out of, or actually, you know what? I could actually see him going for Winks. I could see him going from Winks to Man United because that that seems like a... It just feels like Michael Carrick all over again. It feels mm, like just yeah, one yeah. of them. I, I like don't know, Winks, man. man. Pochettino loves Winks. Absolutely loves Winks. Obviously, now with the squad that we have, he's been playing, but it's going to be a lot harder for him to get into the team. Yeah. Um, and he, but he is a Spurs boy through and through, but it's still one of them ones where I, can, I feel like Pochettino might be able to persuade Winks to, to move away from Spurs and almost like guarantee him time at Man United. Which I think but, could be. But we need that kind of player team. though at the team, bro. Do you know what I mean? He's good, man. He's good in tight spaces. I like Harry Winks, bro. It's one of them ones where again he owes Poch his career, mate. You know what I mean? He probably doesn't come through without Poch. I just feel like Poch, he's just a Poch kind of player, isn't he? And I think that Pogba needs someone like that in the midfield as well, bro. Playing him and Matic in a double pivot against Tottenham, against Ndombele, <laughs> what are you fucking playing? Like? That made no bro, sense. Bro, there was no <laughs> sense, bro. But again, that's Oli, in it? He's clueless, bro. Like, there's no mobility in that midfield because Pogba's quick, yeah, over a long distance, but he's six foot three. He's leggy. He, he's not quick across the ground in, in tight spaces. So when you've got Ndombele in there, yeah, you just, and then Matic is like a lamppost. You, you just run in, oh, in between mate, them. Just, like, just fucking laugh, in it? Like, it was the balance so was easy so for them to pass around both of oh, them and just oh. get him especially with oh, this is why I love Don Bale, man. He just, the way he can just drive forward and carry the ball and just he's so skillful as well it was like as soon as you had no mobility it was just done it was yeah. like, it was it was done but, but this is it he's got absolutely no mobility so like when you've got Pogba you need someone that can get cover ground if you look at when he plays for France you've got um you've got um Kante but also, mm. a lot of the time, you might have Matuidi in there or someone. they got Taliso as well. Taliso. And can, these guys can the run. Like, Pogba needs runners around him. I mean, he's not a short, nippy number eight. Like, he's, he's not that kind of player. For so, sure. you need you need runners around Pogba. You can't have somebody that's slower than him next to him. Like, it, it doesn't actually make sense. So, him and Matic were always going to get swallowed up in that midfield. And I think that Mourinho showed that he had Oli's number there. And you could see in the lead-up to the game, like, he was cracking jokes and stuff. Like, yeah. he knew that he knew what he was going to do to that. Fully. And I think that, well, I mean, there's someone else in the, there's Anna saying, Fred will develop and shine a lot under Pochettino. Yeah, and I think so. Poch will play that. him. Yeah, yeah, Poch will play him, innit? That's what I was thinking. He likes mobile midfielders anyway, and Fred's very tenacious. And I just think that in that role, in the double pivot, he'll play him. He'll so definitely he- play him. Who do you see as like a, a, a Pochettino Man United 11? Who do, you, who do you see as that team right now? I think that Pochettino Man United 11, Bruno, Donny and Pogba all, all start together. All start together. All start together. Have one out, one left. Yeah, he'll right. play Rob. Like he played Ali out from, from wide. He played Ericsson from out wide. He does it and they drift in. 
I mean, and as you said, you see like Donny van der Beek, there's a lot of similarities with Deli Ali in terms of his movement into the box. I think he's better on the ball than Deli, like his one touch passing and his vision and stuff. Hey, but Donny could, Bruno Donny is could the play same off as the Ericsson, right. really. Yeah. Bruno's yeah, a good, go. good, good, good Ericsson esque kind of player. Um, oh, that's what I'm saying. Terms. Systems are very similar, are players are very similar to kind of what we already had. Um, you do obviously still have, I think, massive defensive issues, mm. um, which. We do, it's going to be but interesting right to see how it can be, be all right. resolved. The thing is, like, we're, we're, the way our defense was so good under Pochettino in like the 16 17 and 17 18 season mm. was because our defensive midfielders were so good. Yeah. Because we had Wanyama, Dembele, and even when Dyer CDM at that time was a top CDM at that time because he was very mobile. Nowadays, moves like a fridge like Maguire, but back then mm. was very good. So you had the three of those that were so solid defensively in the midfield that it provided so much cover for the defence that it would made it a lot easier for them to pick the ball up when we were playing like a back three or even yeah. just even as a back four. I Again, it could be the case where I feel like you might need to get a proper DM in January because I don't know if, if Matic will necessarily be able to do that anymore or to the He's standard. Not. He's that, not will, it. that can cover for how bad the centre-backs are is the, is the thing. So you've got two bad centre-backs, well, a few bad centre backs and not a great DM to cover either. So it's a massive gap in the middle that, that probably mm. needs solving potentially in January. Yeah, but, but that's it. He's not it. Um, Matic isn't it, but I said it from last season. I was like, he had a nice little run after lockdown, but I said, I don't trust him for a full season to play defensive midfield. I don't trust him. I, I made it abundantly clear. I was like, well, a DM is more important than a centre back in the summer. And we didn't, we weren't even really linked with one, which mm. was what was worrying for me. So uh, there's a lot that needs to be done at the club. Um, if Pochettino is coming in and we're not going to play with wingers, which is fine, um, it just means we definitely need a defensive midfielder. And we, I don't know, Poch probably is not going to like Wan-Bissaka because he likes fullbacks that can provide width and, and cross and he's not good enough on the ball. Yeah, crossing um, would be a huge thing. Because like I said, especially yeah. if he isn't going to play with wingers, he would need the fullbacks to do that. Yeah. Need to cross him in, so... It'd be interesting to see you there, but at least you might actually have some of your youth come through rather than leave <laughs> some of your top. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Even though there's not really too many of these youth players that I'm overly infused by at the moment anyway, like that are ready to come in now, maybe in the next year or so. Not this season, though. No, I mean, not really. You know I mean, Ethan Led's a very good right back, and I think he's a, a Poch-esque right back, but I don't think that he'll break through this season. So when I'm looking at it, I'm not really sure, but we do need um, a holding midfielder. Like, indeed, he would have been my first choice anyway. I would have definitely gone and got him. So, mm -hmm. I don't know, man. Um, I think I'm, I'm optimistic if Poch comes in, man, just because of what I've seen at Southampton, I've seen at Tottenham, and I've seen him do it on a shoestring budget, and he's going to get a lot more money than he's got at the previous two places, That's isn't it? So, for sure. I just think Poch and money together, I, I can't see how he doesn't significantly like improve what we have and just the players that we have as well. I don't see how he doesn't improve Rashford. He doesn't improve Greenwood. He doesn't improve Martial, Pogba, all of these players. They're all good players. Bruno, he will improve Bruno. He'll improve Donny van der Beek. He'll improve all these guys. So I think it'd be a good refresh as well. Just to have yeah. some of that coming because it's you, you've gone from obviously you said like Mourinho turned very toxic and Man United. Then Oli, no experience just kind of lost, totally lost the dressing room now because of it. Yeah. You can't take control. Whereas now you've got a manager who's obviously now got proper Premier League experience, Champions League experience, um, knows how to like connect the dressing room very, very well. Yeah. Uh, definitely good man manager because a lot of, almost every Spurs player said that he's basically like a, like a friend to them or even like, even like a dad because it's like, yeah. it's yeah. like he, he like looks after everyone. So I think he, he'd be great in that sense to kind of bring everyone together. And, yeah, uh, the, the way you lot treated him was a bit mad. I'm not even gonna lie, bro. But oh, that's, the end me, the was a that, that's Levy, <laughs> innit? Like when Pochettino, when I heard some of the stuff that he done and how like the players were calling him and that, it was mad. Like the way they got rid of him, like he does, he builds that relationship with players, and that's what Jay Rodriguez said. He was just like the relationship he has, like he knows everything about mm -hmm. every player. Like he's literally like that. So I think for a young squad. I think players, I think managers like him just like young players anyway. Van Gaal yeah. was the same because you can mold them in it. They like he's, young quite, players. he's quite a young manager as well, really. Yeah. He is. So he's quite, um, so he, he will definitely love playing the youth more and getting yeah, he's uh, he's one of the managers that's on the 
he, he came from he's kind of been in both eras in it because he was yeah. around he was around when like prime jose was about he was just the young manager and he's kind of come across and now he's one of the top dogs he's around with the lights of the clops even peps are older for him almost now do you know what i mean because of how long he's been in there mm. so like in terms of managing he's a young manager but he's actually done a lot people say yeah he hasn't won anything and that but actually his his grounding's been very solid for a manager his age yeah, I think that's just like the circumstances, though, isn't it? In terms of trophy, well, I mean, like obviously the biggest chances were at Spurs, but Southampton wasn't going to win anything there. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, Espan- Espanyol before that, they weren't going to win anything. Po- uh, Tottenham was the real chance, but again, potent loads of issues, not being backed properly. Some of players. Well, it's not, being- not even not being backed. The money wasn't there, bro. You were buying a stadium, like you know what I mean. It's like when Arsenal weren't spending and they were moving stadiums and that, that wasn't their most successful era. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it happens. For sure. Yeah, definitely, yeah. man. No, I mean, I, them man had to watch guys like Shamak and that. Do you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> you, do you know what I mean? Like that, but this, this, is, this is what happens in football. Like, sometimes when you're moving state, at least you never had to watch Marouane Shamak and flipping... Oh, God. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? Them kind of guys, man. And, and like, oh, my God. They had some, what, Johan Juru and these guys they had playing for them. Oh, I mean, like, they had some shocking players. So, it's one, okay. exactly. so, at least in your Pochettino era, you never had to watch... You never had to watch players like that. Do you know what I mean? So, like, we, he we did the transition pretty quickly, I think. Yeah, <laughs> you, you did your thing and you transitioned whilst getting to Champions League finals and that. Oh, I've got a good, a good comment here saying, uh, they're saying that Poch isn't a good choice to take over, but take Allegri instead. Why would the hell you, would you do that? You would take, would you a, take Allegri, take Allegri and, um, another pragmatic manager. I hate them. Sorry, I I'm hate them. I hate them, bro. Like, I don't like these pragmatic managers. The only pragmatic manager that I would take is Carlo Ancelotti. Other than that, I don't want any of them. Do you know what I mean? Allegri, yeah, like, cool. In Italy, come on, man. Like, I don't even have a dog, but when I have one, he could win the league with Juventus. <laughs> I, I, I think Allegri is going to take over from Pep at Man City. Yeah, possibly. I can see that happening. Because I can see him either... Well, if they carry on the way they're going, I think he could actually get sacked at some yeah. point. Um or he will, or he will just end this year anyway. Mutual consent thing, yeah. Jeez, my dad put in a comment. Hi guys, do you think Man United are the new Spurs? But it kind of feels that way, you know. It kind of feels that way. I can't lie. I can't lie. You guys, not getting results. I, I don't think we could be the new Spurs, man. There's the trophy cabinet's too packed for that. You know what I mean? But oh, okay, okay. We've well, looked uh, at the last year. <laughs> it is, is it? You know what I mean? It's that way. It's heading that way. No, no, no. I don't think we're the new Spurs, but um. I don't know. I think we're the current Spurs right now because both of us ain't won anything. So it is what it is, isn't it? We're both at very similar levels right now, for sure. I think we this are year, very similar this levels. This year is the test. This is the test because now it's like Mourinho's full season at Spurs and also depends what you guys end up doing with. What would be brilliant is if Pochettino comes in and we win a trophy and you lot don't. That oh, would that, be yeah, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would be hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Because you, man, have got Jose that wins a trophy everywhere he goes. And I tell you what, if he doesn't win a trophy this year, it's never going to happen. Oh, if 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 Mourinho does not win us a trophy this year, we are cursed, and we will. Yeah. If he doesn't win you a trophy this year, because that Europa League looks, that's always what Mourinho will go for, isn't it? Because he's a cup manager, he is a knockout manager. He's very good at navigating himself through individual games, and I think that Europa League is your best. I think you're almost nailed on to win that year if you keep all your players fit and Jose has his way, bro, because he oh, can just navigate yeah. through. Finally, we have an actual squad that can <laughs> that can hopefully compete in like all the competitions. Well, because all of a sudden we can. Your bench actually looks decent for once. Now, when you look at your team, I have never seen our bench look so good. Well, mm. it's, it's the best window I have ever seen Spurs do in the terms mm. of market. and the squad. Like, I was looking at the the bench the other day. I think it might have even been against you guys, or maybe it was the game before that. And it was better than our first team last year. Oh no, no, yeah. not that was it. A lot of them were first teamers last year. Yeah. Now they're sitting on the bench. But the, even the better thing, some of the first teamers are pushed to do even better. Ben Davis, Oreo all actually look like decent players now because they've got competition in their spots finally. But this is how you this is how you increase squad depth. You bring in players to the starting eleven and you put your starting players on the bench. United have done it the other way around and brought in Donny van der Beek and put him on the bench. Like, why do you do that? Yeah, that made, that made no sense. doesn't make any sense. To improve your depth, you just have to bring in starting 11 players and push these guys backwards. And, and that's what you do. 
So you can tell the true, true strength of a team by looking at their bench. And, I mean, and I mean, the first bench looks serious. We're already in like some hammered as the like I, I didn't see us beating Chelsea before that because our full focus was like we had to get through Europa League and we had you coming up in the in the league. So it was like the, that's why we didn't start our first team against Chelsea. That was like that was a totally the back of our minds. And the fact that we managed to get through that with basically our second team. All right, we ended up with having Kane and that on the pitch, but for the majority of it, it was pretty much like what our second team is now. And the fact that our second team is actually decent enough to still get through and beat Chelsea in 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 whatever it is like the last 16 and now we're in the quarterfinals against Stoke in December mm. and could potentially get Brentford or Newcastle in the semi-finals it's like all of a sudden we could be, like it feels like it would be very Mourinho to now then go and win the Carabao Cup and just get it done by March and that, I think that would be the perfect thing for us right now because beforehand that was totally at the back of our minds like that was the fourth obviously we can't be choosy but Mourinho was always going to prioritise the Europa League and yeah. I think everyone prefers like an FA Cup run to, to the Carabao Cup. So it's always the back of our minds but now it seems so realistic that we could actually get to the final and win a trophy early. That now has to be a big priority because then you can get all this haven't won a trophy all done and dusted before the season's even anywhere near finished before there's still like two, three months left of the season. And then mm. that focus on finishing strong You've already got that winner mentality of, all right, we've got the trophy in March. Let's go win the Europa League. Let's go challenge top four, even league potentially in the Premier League, depending on how it all goes. Like, I think that sets us up massively to do well. I, 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 there's no way we don't win something this year, even if it is just the League Cup, surely. If you we would hope so, but I, I don't know. You don't might be you don't might be cursed, isn't it? I actually, feel, I don't know who's like back in like the 1930s has put some sort of spell on us and just did say, oh no, after the 60s when we won the league, then and just said, nah, that's it, you're done. No, yeah, but yeah. if you don't think you know what stress is, yeah, you, boy, you won't know anything until you don't win something this year because the amount of banter you lot are going to get is going to oh, be the don't. charts. Don't. Because if you can bring back Gareth Bale and still not get a trophy, yeah. With Mourinho, Bale, and all of this, you lot brought in what six players in that window or something like that. Yeah. If you do all that and still win nothing, you're you're gonna have to hide, isn't it? I will. I fully will. We're gonna we're gonna get banter to the high heavens because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, absolutely. Because that, that City oh. aren't playing well at the moment, which kind of gives you one. I wouldn't say one less team to worry about, but I think if City were firing, um, Liverpool yeah. were firing. Do you know what I mean? And Chelsea were firing. Then I say, yeah, but Chelsea look a bit rubbish right now. They're very touch and go. United aren't playing well. They're looking rubbish right now. Arsenal, I, I still think you lot are better than them. Yeah, so, they're like, starting oh, to- yeah, so on paper, it's only really Man City and um, and Liverpool. And even with Man City, they look like anyone can take them right now. You just need to catch them on a good day. they got no striker. I think Aguero and Jesus are both in. Oh, yeah. That's why they got massive problems. They can't score without them for some reason. Yeah, so I think that's it. You're going for the taking. Like it's just mad. Like De Bruyne just has not started this season well. And if they if De Bruyne is not starting well, when you don't have strikers, they're not going to get goals because it's like yeah. no David Silva now that he's gone. Like is there's like where it's supposed to come in from what Mares and Sterling. Mm. Silva doesn't even get start a lot of yeah, the time. Sterling's been playing in a false line or something. So I think City are there for the taking. I think it's a good time to play Man City. I, this is why I think, like, I don't like... Obviously, you can never get too ahead of yourself from this, but there's no reason why we can't be in the talks for the league this year, to win the mm. league this year, because people are willing to put Everton in that conversation. Yeah, we're only, like, four games in, and they mm. don't have the experience or... Well, they don't even have the squad depth for it, really. They don't have Europe, though, do they? And they? Well, that's that's the one thing. That's what helped Chelsea out massively when we came second, was that they didn't have Europe that year because Di Matteo fucked up the year before. For mm. No, no, not Dimitri. That was years ago. Um, whoever yeah, it was, I mean, um, Thingy. Oh, who was their manager? Who was that? Yeah. Oh, either way, they 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 didn't have Europe, so they could just focus on the league and go for it. So, if if Everton struggle with injuries, then they won't be able to hold it up for the whole year. Mm. Um, which then means, like like you said, like Liverpool showing they're vulnerable. Seven two against Villa would never happen if you are like like they're the champions. This, that should not happen. Yeah, you are vulnerable. Chelsea not starting off that great, given the amount of players they bought um, and could gel. I don't think Lampard's... I think Lampard's mad overhyped. I don't think he's yeah, good. Yeah. Um, he's, 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 he's another Oli, isn't he? He's Oli with a yeah. master degree. That's what I told people. Already, <laughs> that's that's what he is. He's really well, but he's... Mm. 
he's another one. He's another one, man. I mean, he's he's talking himself into into the hot seat in it, but really, he's shown me nothing tactically, and in terms of it's the thing how that he picks the team. He showed me nothing last year. His mm. tactics, just, there was none. There was none because it, no. it was, who was it against? Was it against Arsenal in the FA Cup final? Maybe is is I think that's the one I'm thinking of where he has yes. Arsenal, uh, the Arsenal's on Arteta's game plan was all right. Defense is shaky. We're playing long balls to um, a Bamiyang, yeah. who can literally just sprint and beat it to the ball. It was happening all the time, and Lampard had no response to it the whole game. Yeah, that was when he cooked Zuma in it, and yeah, I remember that. I watched that when I was in Dubai. Yeah. Yeah, there's like constant pressure and like he just didn't know, he couldn't change anything, he didn't know what to do. I think last year he was riding on a lot of the fact that he had to play youth mm. and the youth look up to him massively, obviously because he's a massive Chelsea legend. Yeah. So they want to play for him because he's a Chelsea legend. But now that he kind of has to manage world-class or maybe, well, top international players, yeah, can he handle the, can he handle the pressure of it? Which I don't think he can because I have fairly good sources for someone that knows Rudiger and apparently he hates him apparently he thinks he doesn't he think he thinks Lampard's clueless yeah but he is though it's obvious like listen like Lampard's thing last season was I've almost got a free hit at this managerial thing there's no I don't have a chance for a window I'm going to play all these kids and we're just going to see how it goes in it that's exactly what it is and then they stumbled across the line and just about finished um fourth when really they should have been clear of us Oh, and we we cocked up as well. If we just beaten the who was it? Like there was a couple of things in the restart. If we beat like the Bournemouth when we drew mm. them and things like that, we would have overtaken them as well. Like it would have been like. But this is, they should have been clear of us, but they just kept like doing just enough to be there or thereabouts. And he's brought in all these other players now, and he doesn't even know where to play them, how to play them, how to get the best out of them because he was winging it. Yep. And and that's just all it is. So Lampard, like he's going to get found out very soon. So if you look at the best youth players last year for them as well, you had Mount, Abraham and hudson Adoy. Mount is the only one to survive out of that now because they brought mm. in a striker. He's playing Giroud ahead of Abraham as the second mm. striker and hudson Adoy is nowhere to be seen, pretty much, even when he's fully fit. And even Mount's overrated for me. I just, I, I don't get it, mate. I think, I think he's a good player. I do think he's a good player, but it's, it's... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I don't know how Mount is starting in the midfield. If you've got Kante, Kovacic, Havertz, how does Mount play? I think Havertz has the potential to be a lot better than Mount, is the thing. I do think Mount's... I I think think he's better than Mount now, bro. I just think that the balance of the team... How do you play Mason Mount, like, ahead of any of the... He's not better than any of the players I named. He's not. Like, he's more industrious than them and stuff. But if you know how to coach, who cares? I mean, he just runs around. Like, people are saying, no, he's an eight, he's a ten. He's just a pressing machine. That's all he does, just run around and just shut people down. Like, I, I don't get it, bro. Like, That's what I do in, like, five or something. I just run up. Yeah, I don't, know what he, I don't know what he's good at. I don't know what he's good at. He's not someone that scores every week, so it's not like he's a goal-scoring midfielder like a Lampard. Do you know what I mean? He's not an assist machine. He's not... I don't know what he is. He, he just shuts people down. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, my God. When yeah. someone's best attribute is... Shutting people down, you're Jesse Lingard, isn't it? That's just what it is. Man, God, if he turns into Jesse Lingard 2.0, <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, like, bro, like, he just gives me Lingard vibes. I don't know what it is, especially with that, the, the dancing and the yeah. <laughs> he just gives me Lingard vibes, man. Do you know what I mean? Solid, fundamentally, one, two touch, run, 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 run. That's it. Like, I, I don't get it, I don't get it at all. All right, going back onto back onto United then, and this we got because we haven't really actually talked about it a little bit, but we've got to talk about your ownership. Why is it going so wrong with your with your owners and and obviously like I I know of the story of how the Glazers bought the club and it's, it's turned extremely toxic. People that may not know it's kind of like they what did they do? They effectively bought Manu for however much it was, and then effectively put Manu into so much debt to give them yeah. some money back. Yeah, I think it was six. I want to say six hundred and eighty. They they bought us. Well, I want to say that six hundred and eighty million or something like that. But obviously, taking loans and stuff like that, obviously against the assets of the club, in it. So yeah. like lining their own, lining their own pockets. Yeah, so they literally didn't use their own money. Yeah, At all they didn't money. really use money to buy the club. Like it was just loans and stuff, in it. 
So it's it's different when you've got like a really, really rich like owner that's come in and used their own money to buy it, like what Roman Abramovich done. Abramovich. And, yeah. and then it's pumped more money in. They effectively just mortgaged the stadium like a house in it. Actually. <laughs> I mean, that's effectively what they've done. And then all they've done is they've just been like, yeah, cool, we'll take the equity out of this house and invest it into this. And in so they've literally not put any money in. They've literally taken more money out than they've put into the club. So do you think, like, I think someone's make a good point here as well, like this David Moyes, right? <laughs> um, saying there's no director of football being a big issue for you. Is that, is that mm. what you find as well? As of course, like, of course. What do you mean you can't? We don't have football men dealing with football business at Manchester United. The biggest loss wasn't Salek Ferguson, it was David Gill. Do you know what I mean? P people are like, Yeah, Salek Ferguson's not there. Yeah, but if we had David Gill dealing with the football, getting the deals done instead of Ed Woodward, it would have been a different ball game. Like David Gill's got clout when he walks into when he sends you a fax, you reply. You know what I mean? And that's what it is. Use Ed Woodward. This is exactly why I think. Well, this is kind of exactly why my dad is kind of making the point, the uh, the comment about you guys being the new Spurs because Woodward right now is just give giving full on Levy vibes for what <laughs> because we were exactly the same. We, Levy handles absolutely everything to do with transfers, but he's not a football man himself. Like you said, he's mm. a businessman from an, a large insurance company who's the chairman and running us as a business but is in charge of the players coming in. Yeah. So everything he decides from players coming in is always from a business point of view. And it's mm. only taken to Mourinho and now Mourinho is specifically saying, I want this person, I want that person, I want that person, get it done. Otherwise I'm not signing for you, basically is what happened. Like it, it took that for him to actually spend money. And I feel like Woodward's mm. exactly the same. You've got a non-football man kind of making all the decisions at the club and almost like deciding, all right, what's going to sell shirts? Yeah. Get, get Pogba back. What's going to say? Shirts. Okay, panicking. End of the window. Let's get Cavani because that will do. Yeah, um, and give him the number seven because we're going to sell shirts. To sell the shirts as well. So it's always business decisions. But very quickly, thank you for the two dollar dono from Prince saying, Rants, big fan of yours. Nice one, go. brother. Rants supporter in the chat. Let's go. Yeah, man. I feel like it's just, oh, another two dollars as well. Great job, George. New to this channel. Appreciate it, man. Thank you very much. Yeah, they, they, they're absolute clowns, isn't it? The guys running the club. And the problem is, if these guys don't understand football, it's just like when people are like, oh, there, there's a United premium. There's not a United premium. There's a Woodward doesn't know what the hell he's doing premium. You know what I mean? Because Chelsea are going in and getting players for a lot cheaper than what we would have to pay for them. And it's not because we're Manchester United, because people know Chelsea have money too. It's not the fact that we have money. It's because we have clowns dealing with it. <laughs> if we had a proper director that would go in there and actually do deals, like you look at Chelsea, they signed... Christian Pulisic in the middle of the season yeah. to come at the end of the season. Proper directors of football do that. They go out, they see who's got six months left in their contract. They know these things. They get deals done early before everyone starts sniffing around them in the summer and then you're in a bidding war. That's what proper teams that know what they're doing do. Mm -hmm. And then you've got United that wait till the nth hour when the players are already negotiating with someone else and say, you know what, we'll give you an extra 50 grand to sign for us. What's all that? And then we end up with Alexis Sanchez. It does seem so backwards. <laughs> like, we heard Sanchez was negotiating with Man City, so we offered him more money. And he yeah, came no. to us. That's how we negotiate. I was almost convinced that he was going Man City as well. Like, I thought that was basically done. And then you guys obviously just come in and just said, we'll give you more money. And that, that's where I think you lose so much um, bargaining power mm. by, by being the team that right now you're kind of like, and every agent under the sun knows it. You're the team that would basically, like, you're willing to give the players that extra money and willing mm. to pay, like, all these massive wages for these players and the agents and whatnot. So they take advantage of that big time. And well, I, that's and it. That epitomized it with that Sanchez deal. It was the case that, okay, they knew Man United will just spend the money. And Dortmund took advantage of it as well because um, they, it was the same thing. They were like, all right, well, if, you're, if you seriously want Sancho, you're going to have money. 100 and whatever it was for him, 100, 100 odd million for him. Or, or you're not getting him. And they're in a position now where they don't have to, like these clubs don't have to sell to you guys anymore because yeah. Dortmund are having more, sex, more success in the Champions League than you are at the moment. Bro, I think Christian Pulisic costs like 50 million. I want to say 50 million. I don't know if it's pounds or euros. These guys wanted double and some for Jadon Sancho because it was us. Yeah. Fully. You see what I'm saying? Because they knew we we're useless. Exactly. That if we were a decent club, we probably could have negotiated an 80 million thing for Jadon Sancho and got him. Like, 
that that that's just how it is in this current climate. And yeah, I think it's, it's going to be. It's, it's for me. I feel like it's so hard for you guys now at this point because it's like, how do you go from you are the arguably one of well, you are top two biggest club in the world. You yeah. Know, top two biggest clubs in the world but right now just seem to have a mentality of a mid-table team with what you well, do run well we're run worse than a mid-table team teams like southampton are run better than manchester united so moment yeah <laughs> yeah so it's just one of them things where i just think that the manager new manager coming in will be great but until the people that are dealing with football are actual actually footballing people i think we're still going to be frustrated in it unless Ed is like so infatuated with Pochettino, he just does everything he tells him to do. Do you know yeah. what I mean? We're, which is the only thing we can hope for <laughs> because <laughs> while Ed Woodward's there, we are screwed. <laughs> oh, very quickly, got a New Zealand five dollar donor. Can't wait to see Bale play this week. Four thirty a.m. kickoff in New Zealand Monday morning. Oh, good luck with that. But um, yeah, that's gonna be mental seeing him play. Yeah, I think. Oh, you know what? This is gonna. This is kind of be. This is gonna be a tough question. I'm gonna. Yeah. You know, I think obviously, I mean, you're a Man United fan, so I, I know I kind of know, I know exactly where you're going to go with this anyway. But I definitely want to put yeah. it out, especially for more people in the chat that may not be Man United or Spurs fans as well, just because I'd be very curious. Could Man United potentially be the new big club that just falls to pieces and just just isn't a big club anymore? Like, like AC you know, Milan. Like your, your Milan's, your Leeds, obviously they're coming back up now. Your Nottingham Forest, your Aston Villas, like these teams were huge at one point, massive. Yeah, and but they've all got one thing in common: like the finances screwed them in it. We are rich, bro. We'll buy our way out of it. That's one thing I don't, I don't deny in it. Like AC Milan got done for match fixing, got relegated, all these other things. Ain't yeah. gonna happen to us. Like all these other teams that went into administration and stuff. Worst case scenario, our owners sell us, and then someone richer buys us, and we're fine. Do you know what I mean? And one window will buy our way back into the conversation. You can't see like a it, it also just some yeah. billion trillionaire. Yeah, yeah. This won't last forever. You know what I mean, this will this will not last forever. This isn't this isn't a situation where this is gonna be like this forever. See, um, Liverpool didn't win stuff for a very long time because the club was poorly run, but they didn't have the spending power that we have. I mean, they were buying the John Joe Shelby's and the Charlie Adams of this world, it didn't it? Still kind of don't, weird. weird. And, they, and they still don't really have spending power. It's weird, considering how big they are as a club. It's very strange, their kind of stance on how they spend money as well, I find. They're very well run. That's all it is. Like, they sell players. They buy players with potential to be top players that they can sell for money. It's a good, um, it's a good model. But Manchester United will never have that model. United, you will have the model of we should be buying the best players in it. And I think that with the right owner... Well, you, you should be where Real Madrid are. Real Madrid is... You should be. Buying the best player in the world every year. And then... You should be. We should be getting linked with players like Mbappe and these kind of players. But we're not. That's the thing. So how, how long in that case then do you think it will take for Man United to get back to where Man United were? It depends on it completely depends on the ownership. I don't think it's down to managers, I don't think it's down to anything else. I think it's down to how the clubs run. If we get a director of football in that can deal with the football side of things and also deal with the negotiation side of things, it'll mm -hmm. be sooner rather than later. If we don't, and Edward Wood wants to keep doing this thing on his own, similar to what Levy was doing, then we're in for a long, painful next decade, bro. Like it's 2020. I think I have to agree with you, man, because if for me it's like I, especially in this modern era of football where quite clearly we've seen big spending big spending leads to the trophies from what Man City and Chelsea have shown but you have to do it the right way because obviously you've seen that Man City at the start spent millions trying to bring yeah. in people, the best players Rubinho whoever it may be um, at the time Stephen Ireland which was <laughs> a strange one but um, the, they bring in these players and it just didn't work it didn't click until they started doing it smart. And, and the same with Chelsea. They've always spent a lot of money since the Bournemouth has come in. But I think they've kind of done it smart. They've brought in the right top players to do it. Mm. Like you said, now it does feel like that Man United aren't really doing that. You're not but really... City, yeah, City had a setup though. Like they changed their whole academy system. They built new training ground. They yeah. did it the right way. And then when City first started, they went around the Premier League and they were just buying the best of the Premier League. You know what I mean? That's how Raheem Sterling ended up there. They brought in like Fabian Delfts. They brought in the John Stones. 
all of these that like, they bought Wilfred Bonny, like they bought Adi Bayor, they bought Nasri, they bought most of Arsenal's players. They just went around the Prem and they bought Premier League proven players to get them up to a certain level. And then they started going outside the Premier League and fishing and getting other names from outside. They were basically the the Bayern Munich of the Premier League. Yeah. It's the case of, all right, who's got the best, like some of the best players that we can actually realistically get? Because at the time, you wouldn't, they wouldn't have been able to buy Man United players. Bro, they got Clichy and Sanya from them as well. So they got the right back, left back. They got Nasri, they got Adi Bayo. They knew Arsenal were vulnerable to have to buy from mm-hmm. them. But then it's like, mm-hmm. I feel like what you do as well, and you kind of always used to do with us, is whenever we had like top players come through, you always tended to buy them off of us. And I feel like you did that to a few other clubs as well, like Everton. Yeah. Not. Ferguson very rarely bought from outside the Premier League. He bought Dyke York from Aston Villa. Like the only time he went outside the Premier is if he was almost sure about players. And most of his signings from outside the Prem flopped. When you look at it, yeah, that's true. So I feel like, mm. what, do you think you need to do a bit more of that again now? Because you're not. Yeah, but I said that we could have done that, bro. Like I looked at our team and I was like, we could have stayed in the Premier League, got Jack Grealish, got Indeedy. You know what I mean? And we would have just been fine in it. We could have stayed in the Prem. I think you could have got a Bamiyang from Arsenal. I'm convinced you could have got back yeah. like is there someone like that from Arsenal. Grealish, I think you could easily get from um Aston Villa. Yeah, weren't really to pay the money though. That's what it was. Five year deal, otherwise you'd probably have to pay hundred million for him now as well. But I feel like there were definitely players out there you could have if not. Well, even Kante is available, man. Do you know what I mean? You talk about buying like a DM from the DM from Chelsea and you end up mm. getting but you won't you won't want to try and get Kante, who's probably one of the best defensive midfielders, what well, if not the best defensive midfielder this decade. In, 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 Bro, in, there's players in the Prem United could have gone. We could have got Tielemans here yeah, before he signed the contract. Didn't go get him. Um, Ruben Neves at Wolves could have gone in for him. Didn't want to get him. There's players in the Premier League United could have gone. Like a good like striker, man. United could could go for that. Could like, yeah, Jimenez as well. Now Jota's ended up at Liverpool, but again, and they didn't even spend a lot of money on him. No. So there's exactly. players United could have done the Premier League thing with that would have made them a odds-on top four team, no problem. But they didn't do that. Like even challenge for to challenge for the top two, maybe top three, if you get in those kind of players. Because United aren't that many players off in terms of starting eleven, but the recruitment's been a shambles. Mm, fully, man. Fully. All right. Well, I think we've gone just over an hour discussing discussing the the potential or the possibility or probability of yeah. winning men. Because we're both the same. I think we both think it's going to happen next November. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah next month is in november um because yeah it's just i don't know man. it just always seemed like he was i feel like you almost had it in a contract that he couldn't go to a prem team yeah like, after we sacked him kind of thing yeah they and, said he would lose his payoff or something if he went yeah. in it like it's five yeah. million or something and it's conveniently been a year since we've sacked him nearly yeah. so I feel like it's it's almost like it's a contract situation where he's just got to wait until november from when from the date that we sacked him yep early november Essentially, uh, it was during international break last year, anyway. So if if uh, once that's happened, I'm pretty sure you guys will get rid of Oli and he'll come in. Mm-hmm. I think he'll do a good job. I do think a lot of your fans will be restless though in some situations. If you don't come in your way, but if... I don't think they can be, man. With this this PE teacher, <laughs> yeah. bro, we got slapped six one at home at Tottenham. Like, no, who can who can even say anything? You know what I mean, no, you got to give him time. That was an equal record as well, right? For the biggest defeat at Old Trafford, because I think if we yeah, Man City, we oh beat yeah, us six one, six one. I remember that. if we scored another one, we would have had the record, which would have been yeah. Well, like if it, I still don't know how he wasn't sacked on the spot, unless it quite literally is this contract thing with potential contract Pochettino. Because I think that they're waiting. And also, the hard run of games we've got, you don't want Poch to come in and have to play Leipzig, PSG. Everton away and stuff. Let, let Oli fall on that sword, yeah, innit? And then it's, yeah. it literally seems like they're just throwing him under the bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The yeah let him fall on that. We know we're gonna get we've probably spoke they've probably spoken to Pochettino this this because mm-hmm. he's in the country. I know he's in the country because he's been he's been in Cockfosters <laughs> in, in, in a restaurant recently. So he could easily be talking and saying, Yeah, deal's done, just wait for Ollie to be fr- like just oh talk. it's happening, man. Like when we had the same thing with Jose and LBG, man, we're, we're about to play FA Cup final, and I'm hearing the guys getting sacked after the game, even if we win it. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like Ed Woodward don't care. Do you know what I'm saying? So, like honestly, um, I think. At least Oli will be home for Christmas, isn't it? Or what? Well, yeah, and then not <laughs> not have to go. <laughs> social. This <distance>. is it. <laughs> All 
Oh man. All right, wicked man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. It was good. This was good fun. I've, like I said, I've wanted to get you on for time because I've been on yours quite a few times. And nice. To, I want to do this more often on this channel, especially if you guys watching this as a video after. Make sure to leave comments of any other guest or if you want Rant to come on again. Um, if other news happens or maybe when Pochettino is announced, we could do this again. Mm. And discuss the discuss the future of Man United and <laughs> and whatnot. Um, so yeah, if you guys are watching this, make sure to leave a like. Subscribe to both of us. Um, I'm like, I'm, well, I'm, I think I'm like a few away from 62,000. Like yeah, you must be close now. I am 21 away from 62,000. So if you're w watching oh, this, I'm, I'm 50 from, I'm 50 away from 50. And you're 50 away from 50K. All right. I'm go I've got to hit that tonight. I've got to hit that tonight. I'm getting the killer out, boy. You've got to hit it tonight. I'll put it on socials. And um, I've got a live stream at. Um, 10 o'clock, so 10 o it's one of them ones where, yeah, I'm definitely doing it, man. I'm definitely doing it, bro. The tequila's coming out at 10. Hopefully, I hit it by 10 o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I've got an hour and a half to hit it. 50k, 50 subs, I can do that. All right, calm. Yeah, well, if you're watching this now, make sure to go check that out at 10 o'clock. Um, I just realised I haven't got it in it now, but I will instantly put your link in the description for when this goes up as a video. After that. I'm going straight to it. Um, yeah, man, thanks for coming on. And, nice one, bro. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see you guys in the next video.